My name is Dylan Henry. I am a uh, media and marketing director for a craft beer and liquor distribution company out of Tennessee. Uh, I'm working remotely now in Boston, Massachusetts. Morristown itself, uh, just in general, I would say it is an excellent town to be raised in. It's perfect for settling down in. Morristown itself is small enough that you can know enough members of the community to see your friends every day, you know, walking through the mall, going to the park. You, of course, know other people in your rival high school. But it's also big enough that you can go to the other side of town or you can go to these same spots that you're used to and um, still be surprised with what you can find. Yeah, the change in climate, the change in temperature and how nature interacted with Morristown, it hadn't really changed in recent years from my own perception, my own memory. Um, what I last remember is back whenever I was either four or five in uh, either 2000, 2001, or 2002. Um, back in those winters, we had extremely heavy snowfalls, at least for Morristown's, you know, understanding. You know, we were getting about a foot to a foot and a half, which, you know, up here in freezing cold Boston is hardly anything, but at least down in Tennessee, you know, that was a pretty big pretty big handful of snow and I just remember as a kid playing in these big snow heaps making giant snowmen um, it just being what felt like a winter wonderland and nowadays even thinking back that's a lot of snow for what I grew up with as I got older I remember not seeing hardly any snow at least in that measure so um, if I were to think off the top of my head we probably got you know half an inch to four inches of snow whenever I you know, was growing up in high school and in middle school. So I would say out of everything that's changed in the climate in Warstown, where we're down in the valley, definitely would have to be the snowfall. It's been really interesting because it's not necessarily the uh, foliage, because it's still temperate jungle. It's a lot of the same foliage that's out here in uh, Boston, but it's been just the harshness of the mountains that I miss. You know, when you're in Tennessee, especially in East Tennessee and Appalachia, um, it's easy to feel just almost like cradled by the mountains, especially growing up in Morristown where it's in a valley. You're completely surrounded by mountains on all sides and it's comforting in its own way to constantly have what feels like a bowl that you get to be in the bottom of. So um, I would say personally, it's been a big change of pace because I do like to, like I said earlier, whenever like to retreat off into the woods. It's nice to be able to be surrounded entirely by mountains and by trees where I feel like I'm alone. I have solace. I will say with the trees, though, um, it's interesting, too, because there are a lot of the same foli or foliage, but there's a lot more pine. So in the wintertime, it's really beautiful to see not just dead bones, everywhere with the trees sticking up you know hibernating for the winter it's good to see both pine trees too covered in snow so you get those harsh contrasts with green and white yeah uh just as you mentioned my uh, second secondary job and one of my favorite pastimes is photography i had originally started back when i was in i would say high school probably my junior or senior year um i started with landscape photography so of course that wraps up entirely with nature and while I was going out and taking these photos, it was an excellent opportunity to get out and hike, um, see how the world changes, not only through my lens, but through my own eyes, uh, in the rain, the snow, um, out on the lake, you know, heading off away from Morristown itself and into Middle Tennessee or deep into East Tennessee in the mountains. So photography has definitely been one of those things that's always gotten me outside. And that personal drive to get out in the world and travel, to see new sites that at least the people in small town Warstown hadn't seen, is really what got me into photography. So first it started off by going into Morristown, whether it was in uh, Cherokee Park, or I had special like certain spots under certain bridges, or uh, cliffside views that a lot of people didn't get to see that were special to me that I got to pick up with my photography and kind of put my own spin on it. And as that developed, um, I started getting more artistic with it to where I would, whether through editing or just the camera angle in which it was shot, would do 
personal spins, whether they were long exposures, uh, kind of what I called cardboard cutouts to where the shadows would be so heavy you couldn't see anything else in the frame but exactly what I was wanting to point out. Mm. Uh, there was a photograph I took, I would say maybe 2018 or 2019, that um, it was a self-portrait of me at the bottom of just like, if I were to picture, imagine two stories of concrete rubble with an overhanging of fall trees, so you get the orange, the reds, and the greens. But what it was, was it was me hanging off of this dystopian, almost concrete uh, explosion in the middle of this forest with nature draping down, both in front of my face, to the side, vines growing up this concrete wall, and it was able to show that even though humanity has taken over, and this humanity uh, in particular had decayed and was left to be taken over, you could show that the nature was creeping and crawling up into it. And I tried to, at least with the self-portrait, make myself fit that same feeling with rustic colors, uh, scraped up clothing, cut jeans, um, but as far as the nature creeping in, I think uh, pairing the two together in a juxtaposition was one of my favorite photos. Um, I did the same thing with uh, a rainbow, so there is a rainbow over a abandoned, um, over an abandoned hospital, and it was really cool to see the. Uh, just the beauty of the natural world with kind of the mist and fog rolling in with rubble, <laughs> shattered windows, rust, like uh, rusted metal and broken brick. Um, all of that beauty and the rainfall uh, really added to some unique photos as far as nature is concerned. Gotcha. Yeah, I would say that there have been a lot of times where all I wanted to do was just run out into the woods and just spend the day to myself, <laughs> which doesn't get done near as much as it should. But I've definitely had days to where I will just hop in the car, drive out, and just retreat off into the woods. Now, it can either be up on a hillside, just walking down some winding trail that heads, like, alongside of a lake, or just deep into some unpaved path. Or it can be just in the backyard, just sitting with my legs crossed with either a thing of tea or a beer and just letting the wind hit my face. If it's misting outside, not like a downpour of rain, but if the let rain's lightly falling, I'll just go out and sit and just take it in, you know. I feel like lending yourself and lending your own conscious to nature itself kind of lets you feel like the chaos in your own life is not nearly as eventful as nature can be, you know. One thing that I feel like we're moving away from a lot as a society, as um, we just kind of lose touch with what it's like to truly be outside. Recently, um, I went out with some friends to what well, feels like the middle of nowhere here, of course. Back in Tennessee, the middle of nowhere could be two hours in any direction. And unless you're heading towards Knoxville or Johnson City, at least for Morristown's sake, you're going to be in the middle of the woods, in the middle of the mountains, literally in the middle of nowhere. We just drove 45 minutes outside the city, and to them, that was the middle of nowhere. There were lakes and trees and swamp, swampy marshes, and that was just entirely different to them. And it was really making me think that as a society, we so easily get trapped in our comfortable zones, whether that be in our house, in our work, in our day-to-day -day lives, that we forget to look back and soak up what our ancestors have lived in for, you know, thousands of years and before that just how the world naturally was for millions of years before that. And I think everyone could do well with just taking time to go outside, keep your eyes closed, or leave them open, and just soak in everything happening around you. Take time to listen to the wind, take time to feel the rain, feel the sun, feel the gloomy overcast clouds and how that reacts with your own emotions, and just let yourself feel as wild and chaotic as the outdoors can be.